Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is June 4th, 2022. This video is called Hope in the Day of Darkness. We have clearly entered the day of wrath, the day of darkness, the, the day of thick clouds. This is going to be a difficult video for me to do and, and possibly for you to watch. <clears throat> I think it's going to be deeply personal, and I don't like to um, do that. First, let me start with uh, a scripture. Go to Isaiah 24. Behold, I am will empty the earth and make it desolate. And he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the slave, so with the master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, so with the debtor. The earth shall be utterly empty and utterly plundered, for I am has spoken this word. This is the time we live in, and it is an ugly, ugly time. Notice in verse 2, 24 verse 2, that God includes everyone. The people, the priest, the slave, the master, the maid, the mistress, the buyer, the seller, the lender, the bank, and the borrower, you, the creditor, the debtor. Everyone is included. All of us, even me. And I don't like it because I am hurt by it. still debating how much to share personally, so let me just go on. Twenty-four four. The earth mourns and withers. The world languishes and withers. The highest people of the earth languish. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are scorched, and few men are left. Do you realize how serious those words are? The earth mourns. Don't you feel it? <laughs> Don't you feel it? Don't you know it? Why can't you see? Why is everyone still so blind? The earth mourns and withers. The world languishes and withers. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. This is true.
for everyone, for Christians, for non-Christians. Christians have turned grace into lawlessness. New Age believers think that they have the grace to make law for themselves. They can decide what's right and what's wrong for them. As long as it doesn't hurt anybody, of course, they say. But everyone is lawless. We've all transgressed God's laws. And now, we suffer for it. My wife works hours a day in her garden. And almost everything she plants and grows is destroyed by some kind of a pest, whether it's a worm, a mold, a fungus, a groundhog, a deer, whatever it is, almost everything fails. We bought 25 chickens and a rooster back at the beginning of March, three months ago. Because we saw the famine coming and we saw the food shortages that they have planned coming. We raised them in our house in the basement for about a month. And it wasn't easy. My wife and my son had to change the bedding all the time because they stink. And finally, after a month, we decided that's long enough. And we, we had ordered a new coop. It was not here yet. It was going to come later in the week. My wife moved all the chickens. So back to my chicken story. Um, so we had the chickens in our home for about a month. And then we decided we wanted to get them out of the house because it was just too much work and trouble and smelly. And so our newly ordered coop was not here yet. So we decided to make a place for them in our shed, our tool shed. Uh, my wife did a lot of work that day, moved them all into the shed, prepared a place for them in a box with, well, you know, laid out boxes and made a large space for them. Set up a pole with a heat lamp because it was still cold at that time here. And um, then that was, she probably had it prepared by noon or something like that. Then we went, uh, we had a time of fellowship in the backyard around 4.30, close to 5, and then uh, walked around to the front of the house and saw thick smoke pouring out of the shed. The chickens had dislodged the heat lamp and had that then had fallen to the floor, started the... Um, sawdust on fire and uh, of course killed all the chickens and rooster and destroyed most of our tools and destroyed the uh, shed. Well, so much for preparing for the famine disaster or at least attempting to do one thing that would have helped because it would have given us plenty of eggs. And that's not the worst thing that happened over the last three months. Almost uh, exactly three months ago, it's been a full three months now, I had a stroke. Fortunately, it did not seem to affect my thinking but I have had a numbness in the left side of my face from my ear through my lip and my, through my neck for now over, over three months. 
and um, some days are very difficult. I have thought several times, somewhere between five and ten, that I would certainly die that day or that hour. It was, um, I think, March 10th that I called all my five children and told them I was dying and that I would probably be dead within the day. Now, I don't like sharing uh, personal things like that. But we have entered into a season where what I suffered is not unusual. As I see reports, of course not through the mainstream, but as I see reports posted, I see many, many people dying or dead because they listened to the lies and did the thing that everybody said they ought to do. And you know what I mean. I did not do that. I knew better than that. But you see, a deep veil has covered the people. And the people have believed a lie. And so most people are deceived now, including most Christians. Most Christians do not see where we are in time. We have entered the day of wrath. And God's people are suffering just as much as the world is suffering. God could have kept me from having a stroke, but he didn't. And, and I haven't been happy about that. It hasn't been a nice thing. Um, yesterday, I finally made the decision to... Um, turn off the phone and the internet at my law office. I have totally shut down my law practice. It may possibly be resumed. I, I did transfer the phone number to uh, my new track phone, my first cell phone that I've ever owned because I don't believe in being a slave to a cell phone either. But now that uh, I have to close my office, I wanted to have um, at least the ability to resume my law practice if the Lord makes it clear that I should. Probably won't because we have entered the day of wrath. Everything is changing. So I was. Let me just go ahead and read these scriptures today Isaiah 24 through 27, four chapters that deal with this time. I'm going to start back at 24.4. The earth mourns and withers. The world languishes and withers. The highest people of the earth languish. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are scorched, and few men are left. Unfortunately, this thing that everybody did, 
most people did. It's going to kill them. Many doctors who saw what was happening have said that they expect most, perhaps all people who did it to die within three to five years. If you did, you know, God, God can heal, but he usually doesn't. You know, go back to Isaiah 24, uh, verse 2. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, everyone. As with the slave, so with the master, everyone. As with the maid, so with her mistress, everyone. As with the buyer, so with the seller, everyone. As with the lender, so with the borrower, everyone. As with the creditor, so with the debtor, everyone. Everyone feels this pain. Everyone is being affected by what is happening in the earth right now. And it's because the earth, the inhabitants of the earth, transgressed God's laws. 24-7, the wine mourns, the vine languishes, all the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourines is stilled. The noise of the jubilant has ceased. The mirth of the lyre is stilled. No parties, no happiness. You know, people still are pretending, but... No more do they drink wine with singing. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The wasted city is broken down. Every house is shut up so that no one can enter. That's happened, hasn't it? There is an outcry in the streets for lack of wine. All joy has grown dark. The gladness of the earth is banished. Desolation is left in the city. The gates are battered into ruins. For thus it shall be in the midst of the earth among the nations, as when an olive tree is beaten as at the gleaning when the grape harvest is done. They lift up their voices. They sing for joy over the majesty of the Lord. They shout from the west. Therefore in the east give glory to the Lord. In the coastlands of the sea give glory to the name of I Am, the God of Israel. From the ends of the earth we hear songs of praise, of glory to the righteous one. But I say, I waste away. I waste away. Woe is me, for the traitors have betrayed. With betrayal, the traitors have betrayed. It's hard to imagine the level of treason in the world right now. Virtually every nation, its legislators, its executives, and all the people who execute the laws have knowingly betrayed their own people. For what? Money? What? Sex? What? What was it? Why did they betray their people? They got something. They wanted something. And so for that something, they betrayed. I'm not going to name names. You know who they are. It's so clear. The traitors have betrayed. Terror and pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. Now, people lift up their voices and they sing with joy over the majesty of I Am. I feel no joy myself at this time. Certainly there are some who, there must be some who do. I think there's a lot of churches where people still pretend that they have joy and pretend that there's things happening. But terror and the pit and the snare are upon us, we inhabitants of the earth. He who flees at the sound of the terror shall fall into the pit, and he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are opened, and the foundations of the earth tremble. The earth is utterly broken, the earth is split apart, the earth is violently shaken. 
The earth staggers like a drunken man. It sways like a hut. Its transgression lies heavy upon it, and it falls and will not rise again. Babylon is falling. The corruption of the world will not continue long. On that day, the Lord will punish the host of heaven and heaven and the kings of the earth on the earth. So God is going to punish both the spiritual and the natural. They will be gathered together as prisoners in a pit. They will be shut up in prison. And after many days, they will be punished. Then the earth will be confounded and the sun ashamed for I am of hosts reigns on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and his glory will be before his elders. We need to understand that this is God's doing. This is this has been planned and purposed from thousands of years past, even before the foundation of the earth. Jesus was slain before the foundation of the earth. This is the plan of God. What is the plan of God? Do you know it? Do you know what the plan of God is? Why why do we go through this? Because God is making us into his image. And he had to place us in a very unfriendly environment. Do you think it was a mistake? Was God surprised when Adam sinned? When Adam and Eve sinned, was he surprised? Well, why why did he allow Satan to be in the garden with Adam and Eve? Were they experienced spiritual warriors knowing the craftiness of the enemy? No. So why did he allow, allow Satan into the garden? One reason. In order to tempt Adam and Eve. He did it on purpose. Can you wrap your head around that? Can you understand that? He did it on purpose. So why? Because God did not create men like a robot just to do what he said to do. He created man to be like him. Just as all of the trees and the animals reproduce after their own kind. God reproduced after his own kind. And the church will not talk about this. The church will not even begin to talk about this. They're afraid to. They think that somehow that makes them a heretic. Well, the fact that they don't speak about it makes them a heretic. The church is very worldly. The church has listened to the beguiling serpent through many voices and really does the bidding of the serpent. And so, in order for man to become like God, and just read 1 John Chapter 2, verse 28 to 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, it says exactly what I'm saying to you right now. In order for that to happen, God had to put us in a, an environment that would test us. We had to be able to reach out our hand and choose evil if we wanted to. If you still want to, then you're not where God wants you to be. If you still want to do evil things, and you know what they are. The, 
Scripture is very clear as to what the evil things are. If you still want to do those, and this is why God mentions in Isaiah 24 why he now has brought the day of wrath. Because men have thrown off the law of God. The law is what tells us is right and wrong. The law is reiterated number a number of times in the New Testament. Paul frequently talks about the requirements of the law. He would not have known what sin was except for the law told him. But he also teaches us that we're not under law, we're under grace. But when grace is in the earth, the people of the world do not learn righteousness. Instead, they learn that by grace they can sin. By grace, they can do any unlawful deed that they want to do. That's where we are today. And that's why judgment had to come. Also, have you ever considered why it is that all of the scientists have created plants now that cannot even reproduce after their own kind? They don't reproduce after their own kind. You have to buy seeds from them. They've totally perverted God's creation. The traitors have betrayed in every level, and in every aspect of our lives. The traitors have betrayed. Now, Isaiah 25 begins like this, and it's a break from what we've just read. Oh, I am, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. And I will exalt God and I will praise his name. I will not curse God and die as Job's unfaithful wife told him to do. Of course she repented. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap the fortified city a ruin. The, foreign, the foreigner's palace is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm against a wall, like heat in a dry place. You subdue the noise of the foreigners as heat by the shade of a cloud, so the song of the ruthless is put down. On this mountain, what mountain? The mountain of the Lord. Go back to the beginning of Isaiah when God talks about establishing his mountain. On this mountain, the mountain of I am, the mountain, the rock that became a mountain in Nebuchadnezzar's dream in the book of Daniel. On this mountain, the mountain of Israel, Mount Zion. On this mountain, New Jerusalem, the Lord of hosts, I am of hosts, will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. Today, the people of the earth have a veil covering them, and they do not understand where they are. They do not understand the time that they live in. I am will swallow up death forever. And I am, the, our God, I am, will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For I am has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is I am. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of I am will rest on this mountain. And Moab shall be trampled down in his place as straw is trampled down in a dung hill. And he will spread out his hands in the midst of it, Moab, as a swimmer spreads out his hands to swim. 
but I am will lay low his pompous pride together with the skill of his hands, and the high fortifications of his walls he will bring down, lay low and cast to the ground, to the dust. Who's Moab? Moab was the son of Lot, created by incest. Remember Moab, or Lot was the one whom the angels removed from Sodom. He left Sodom, went to a cave, and his daughter, daughters made him drunk and lay with him. And the result of the first was Moab, the second, ben which is father of the Ammonites. And who's Lot? Remember that righteous man, Lot? who was vexed in his soul by all of the evil that he saw day and night. And he sat in the gate as a judge in Sodom. But yet he partook of Sodom. He was the religious man. He was the carnal Christian. He's, he's the one who had no problem living in Babylon, living amongst the defiled. Vexed wanted to do some right things. But he's the carnal Christian. He's the one, the carnal Christians, the ones who have established the religiosity in this world. All of the major churches are filled with Moab. and the Ammonites. They produce the false doctrine, the false teaching, the false prophecies, the false prophets. They're as much to blame for what's going on as the ones who actively worship Satan. They're always just a step or two behind what the Satanists say is next to do, like abortion, sex change. They take part in all the things the world says to do. There, many of them now are suffering from the thing that they did that everybody told them they had to do. So verse 25 moves from the declaration of utter judgment in chapter 24 Chapter 25 moves to the declaration of the mountain of the Lord being established in the earth. And then chapter 26 continues this. And we are fast approaching this time that the kingdom of God will be birthed in a day. And I am so expectant that that day will be today. Maybe tomorrow, the day of Pentecost. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. He sets up salvation as walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. This is the only way that we can remain in peace now. We have to remain fixed and stayed upon our Lord. Trust in I am forever, for our God I am is an everlasting rock. For he has humbled the inhabitants of the height, the lofty city. He lays it low, lays it low to the ground, casts it to the dust. The foot tramples at the feet of the poor, the steps of the needy. The city of man is being brought low now. The city of man is being destroyed by the rulers. Our, our nations are being destroyed by our own rulers. The path of the righteous is level. You make level the way of the righteous. 
In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and remembrance are the desire of our soul. Remember this. God, God is the one who has brought judgment upon the earth now. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. If favor is shown to the wicked, he does not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he deals corruptly and does not see the majesty of the Lord. Really, this describes what happened in the lands of the earth where there was righteousness at a time. People did deal righteously at one time. And there have been times even in America where people did deal righteously. But the righteous never expect to be dealt unrighteously with by those that they treat well. Because if favor is shown to the wicked, the wicked person does not learn righteousness. And back in verse 9, it says, But when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. This is all in Isaiah 26. So here we are now, where God's judgments are in the earth, and now finally the earth is going to learn righteousness. Verse 11, O Lord, O I am, your hand is lifted up, but they do not see it. They do not see it. Let them see your zeal for your people and be ashamed. Let the fire of your adversaries consume them. Let the fire for your adversaries consume them. O oh, I am, you will ordain peace for us, for you have indeed done for us all, all our works. Are you going to complete in the flesh now what was begun in the spirit? No, we cannot accomplish anything in the flesh. The things that we have done that are of value have been things that God has done in us, through us. You have indeed done for us all our works. O oh God, uh, I am. Other lords besides you have ruled over us. Other lords have ruled over our flesh, have made us do things that we don't want to do. But your name alone we bring to remembrance. They are dead. Other lords, they are dead. They will not live. They are shades. They will not arise. To that end, you have visited them with destruction and wiped out all remembrance of them. But you have increased the nation, O I am. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. You have enlarged all the borders of the land. That's the land of Israel. This Israel is the land of the righteous, the land of the overcomers of God. O I am in distress. I'm going to go back. The Israel, quit thinking about Israel in terms of the carnal and the flesh. Quit being a, being a Zionist if you are a Zionist. There will be no third temple erected in the ancient land of Israel in which our God will ever come. The temple described in Ezekiel chapters 40 to 48 is a spiritual temple. There will never be a reinstitution of animal sacrifices that God ordains. People may do it, but it will not be blessed by God because he changed the law when Jesus came. Jesus was the fulfillment of all the sacrifices. He will never implement bloody sacrifices again. Stop being a Zionist. So many Christians are Zionists. It's just unbelievable. And Zionists have done many evil things. Chapter 26, verse 16. Oh, I am. In distress they sought you. They poured out a whispered prayer when your dis discipline was upon them. Like a pregnant woman who rises and cries out in her pangs when she is near to giving birth, so were we because of you, oh, I am. We were pregnant. We writhed but we have given birth to wind. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth and the inhabitants of the world 
have not fallen. Understand, it has not happened. We have never seen, we have never produced the great revival, the great things that God has ordained for us. We have only given birth to wind. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth. We can't save a fly. We can't heal a fly. Your dead shall live. Their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For your dew is a dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Yes, the resurrection of the dead is coming. That is our hope. The resurrection of the dead and the glorification of those who are still alive and left because they will be the overcomers that God establishes to rule the world in righteousness. And then we will see change. Come, my people. Here's where, where we are right now. Come, my people. Enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by. For behold, I am is coming out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover its slain. Compare that to the end of um, chapter 18 of Revelation, the judgment upon Babylon, because Babylon is judged because she was the one who destroyed and killed everyone in the earth. It was her sin that led to the death of everyone who was murdered and killed in this earth. Isaiah 27. In that day, I am with his hard and great and strong sword will punish Le Leviathan, the fleeing serpent. We're talking about Satan here. Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. The dragon that is in the sea, the dragon that is in us. Satan is the one who deceived Eve. Mankind is the sea that never rests in this earth, and the dragon it has been in us. In that day, a pleasant vineyard sang of it, I I am, am its keeper. Every moment I water it, lest anyone punish it. I keep it night and day. Now here's an interesting verse. I have no wrath. Would that I had thorns and briars to battle. I would march against them and I would burn them up together. Or let them lay hold of my protection. Let them make peace with me. Yes, let them make peace with me. That's our only hope. Make peace with God. Ultimately, we all will make peace with him when we finally understand the purpose for all of this, that he has been making us into his image. In days to come, Jacob shall take root. Jacob became Israel, so Jacob is the natural man. Israel shall blossom and put forth shoots and fill the whole world with fruit. So Israel... The overcomers of God who are glorified will blossom, put forth shoots, and fill the whole world with fruit. I'm going to stop there in chapter 27 of Isaiah at verse 6 because I want to spend a little time to describe some more about what God is doing in this day. Hebrews chapter 11 is the chapter of the great cloud of witnesses, and then it goes on to chapter 12, and I'm going to read chapter 12 now. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, people of faith, and he goes through so many of people of faith, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy 
that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him. Consider Jesus, God, who came in the flesh. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, have you? We're still here. Jesus went farther than I did. He went to the point of allowing people to take him and crucify him. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. And so, going back to what I told you had happened in my own life earlier this year, I have to see this as God's discipline that just like Jacob, when, when he wrestled with the angel of the Lord, God touched his hip and crippled him and then changed his name from Jacob to Israel. So in coming into the status of an overcomer, he became crippled. From then on, he knew that his only choice, his only, the only thing he could do was trust in God to get by, to make it for everything. Hebrews 12, 7, it is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. So it's a positive thing, see? Rejoice that he's treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Well, cry out if you feel like you've never been disciplined by God and seek God. Seek the word of the Lord, that the word of the Lord will be revealed to you. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits? and live. He's the father of our spirit. He disciplines us for our good. For they disciplined us, our earthly fathers, for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. Share his holiness. Be like him. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. You have to understand this. You have to strive for holiness. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a temp tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. And this is talking about the time just after Moses led the people of Israel out and at the time that the law was given to Moses. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Read Exodus 19 and 20. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So we have not come to a natural mountain 
We have come to a spiritual mountain. We have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the church of the firstborn, to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. It's the firstborn who get the inheritance, the double inheritance. And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking, for they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. God is warning from heaven right now. God is warning the whole world from heaven right now. At that time, that is the time of Moses, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, the things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. We are being shaken. I know I have been shaken to my roots by what, what has happened to me over these last three months and still continues because I still feel the effects of my stroke. I'm thankful that I can still think. I'm thankful that I can still do things. But I feel it and I don't have uh, some strengths that I used to have, like physical strength and uh, emotional strength. It seems that I've been weakened in those areas. So, but rejoice because God is shaking us so that what cannot be shaken, that is our faith, our hope, our love and reverence for God will remain. That we will continue walking in faith, especially in this time where everything that can be shaken is being shaken. God is shaking the heavens and the earth. Read Luke 21 concerning the the uh, prophecy of Jesus concerning the time of the end, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And now to sum this up, here in Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, which was not Paul, I'm convinced it may have been Apollo, the writer of Hebrews quotes from the book of Haggai, chapter 2. In the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, that is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's, this is why some people believe that the glorification, the fulfillment of the promise for glorification will occur on or during Tabernacles. In the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, the word of I am came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Zerubbabel means the seed of Babel. We are all the seed of Babel. We have all been bred and raised in Babylon, the great. Joshua is the word Yeshua, the, the name of Jesus. Son of Jehozadak, like the word Zadok, which is or Melchizedek, which is the king of righteousness. So this is alluding to the sons of Zadok, who are the overcomers, and to the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood to which the overcomers have been called. Speak now to Zerubbabel and to Joshua, 
to Yeshua and to all the remnant of the people and say, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Is it as nothing in your eyes? Yes, the new temple was nothing compared to Solomon's temple. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel declares, I am. Be strong, O Yeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares I am. Work, for I am with you, declares I am of hosts, according to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit remains in your midst. Know that God's spirit remains in our midst. Fear not, for thus says I am of hosts. Yet once more in a little while. Now, 2,500 years later, a little while has come to pass. We are in this time of a little while. Yet once more in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations so that the treasures of all nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with glory, says I am of hosts. What house? Is he going to fill the churches? Is that the house he's talking about? He's talking about his house. His house is New Jerusalem. That's his house. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares I am of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says I am of hosts. And in this place I will give Peace declares, I am of hosts. So this is where we are. We are in the day of clouds and thick darkness. We are in the midst of the day of wrath. It is a time of suffering. It is a time of pain. It is a time of shaking. God is shaking everything that can be shaking, shaken. He has shaken me. It, it has not been easy. This has not been easy. This has been the hardest time in my 44-year walk with God. harder even than watching the murder of my baby child. This is a difficult time. Many people are sick and dying, far sicker than I am, in much more pain. And God seems far off. Father, I pray for your people. I pray for this world. I pray you'll have mercy even in the midst of wrath. For we are weak and we have no recourse but you. We have no one to help us, and there is no God but you. Please act. Come and act. Bring your kingdom. 
to earth. Let peace and justice come to earth. In Jesus' name, amen.